for all their lives to follow Jesus and fish for people. Continuation of the disciples being called last week. Now we have a total of six disciples called with the same baptismal repentance and with their voices proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah. So we turn to the beginning of the worship service and we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we turn to our prelude and uh, listen to what Janet has prepared for us. Thank you for the prelude. Let's begin with the confession. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess, captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive in Jesus Christ. By grace, you have all been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For your, for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend this gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer for today. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with today's readings. Charlene, uh, can you unmute? Okay. All right. The reading for today is from Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. The book of Jonah is a comedy starring a reluctant prophet who is given a one-sentence message. Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days. Much to Jonah's dismay, the people of Nineveh repent. The point of the story is to get the reader to wrestle with the question, on whom should God have mercy? A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, get up. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Glory to you, O Lord. Before Jesus calls his first disciples, he proclaims a message that becomes known as the gospel or good news from God. God is ready to rule our lives. Those who realize this will respond with repentance and faith. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in good news or translated, repent or confess and have faith that the good news is the forgiveness of sins. 
As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you. to you, O Christ. Well, I see Jacob and June are here today. And I was going to ask you to help us figure out some answers to a question. And the question is, what do you need to know about being a good fisherman? What do you need to know about being a successful or a good fisherman? Do you have any ideas? The only time I've ever fished, I never caught anything. Pardon, June? The only time I've ever fished was with my grandpa and I didn't catch anything. Ah, so when you did go fishing with him, what kinds of equipment did you have? We had a fishing pool and then we bought some worms at a bait shop that was near where we were. And you probably knew more about fishing than you realized. Did you fish with a little hook like the end of, the, of your little finger or did you fish with a hook as big as your hand? I fished with a little hook. It was just like one of the store-bought Door Explorer uh, fishing poles that I had. So you knew that the fish were going to be little that you fished for. You see, no yeah. They weren't huge ones. So you're you're pretty good at fishing, better than you thought. Oh, a little tiny see. hook. And, and the bait shop said, here, I want you to put this sandwich on the hook. No, they said, use this worm, right? So you knew more about fishing than you really thought. And fishing is, oh, it's not always 100%. Where's Jake at? I'm looking for him. I'm here. I'm here. Um, so what I know about fishing is that, what are you doing? It's in your camera. Oh. Um, so what I know about fishing is that you need to not, so our grandpa took both me and you now at separate times. Um, but we fished in a very shallow area where there were not going to be many, very many fish. Um, and there were just rocks, a lot of rocks. Um, but a different thing I know that you should always do when you're fishing is go to a deeper area, um, bigger, that's where big fish are. And that there are different types of fishing like fly fishing and just fishing fishing and they have to make sure that if you catch a certain fish that you're not allowed to catch you put it back in yeah see you guys know a lot about fishing that's right go to the deeper spot and those rocks did you did you did you snag a rock and lose your gear, lose your gear? uh no because they were like river rocks like oh. really smooth gotcha. but there is this other time that we're not you know, Mm -hmm. One of the things about fishing that Herb Johnson knows is that you never go fishing barefoot. At least he doesn't because the barefootness scares the fish away for Herb anyway. So isn't that right, Herb? Yes, he said. So, you know, there's a lot to know about fishing. Does anybody else that's an adult have some tidbits that work for them when they go fishing. Anybody want to volunteer something? When I was little, my dad always wanted to go as early as possible in the morning. There you we go. Five o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Five o'clock. Go early. Anybody else? My dad liked to say that the it's called fishing, not catching, because you don't actually need to catch a fish to have a good time. <laughs> there you go. That sounds like he was a pretty good fisherman then, successful. So that's some of the things that we've learned together about fishing. But, you know, there have been whole books 
written about how to fish this and how to fish that. And, and if you went out in the ocean, you'd probably fish differently than if you fished in Spring Lake or in the Columbia River, all have different ways to fish for the different kinds and species of fish. It's an interesting sport. So it's also interesting that today Jesus asked his disciples to come fish for people. Now, if you, if you were gonna fish for, oh, let's say Charlene Olson, if she was somebody you wanted to fish for, Jesus would be saying, well, you need to go visit with her and you need to talk to her about your faith and her faith. And, and one of the things he says in this scripture is talk about the good news of Jesus. Now, I happen to know that Charlene loves to talk about the good news of Jesus. And so that would be a great place to practice fishing. Another person I know that loves to talk about the good news of Jesus, the two of them are Carol and Steve Nelson. That would be a great place to go and talk about and practice doing the fishing for people. In fact, most of the people on our screen today love so much to talk about the good news that you could be comfortable fishing at any of their homes. That's kind of what Jesus asks us to do. And Jesus wants us when we go to those places like the fishing hole of the lives of the people on the screen is be confident that they love you and that they love our Lord Jesus and you can practice fishing together. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for our congregation and how they love you and that they invite us as children as little ones in our congregation to go to them and practice fishing and to practice talking about the good news and the redemption of Christ. Amen. So today we need to look at the big picture of the season of Epiphany. If you remember, the season of Epiphany began with the baptism of Jesus. And in that baptismal story, we heard that the baptismal waters that we're all washed with bring to us through Christ redemption, forgiveness, good news. So that's the tone of the entire season of Epiphany. Last Sunday, we had these characters, the disciples, meeting Jesus for the first time. They seemed to be followers of John the Baptist, and now they're switching to Jesus. And the story, story basically goes that Andrew sees Jesus, and he goes to Nathan, and he says, I want you to come and see the Messiah or the one who brings salvation or good news to God's people. Come and see him. That's another way of saying, come and fish with me with him. You see, Andrew tells Nathan this, Nathan tells Philip this, and Philip tells Peter this. The theme continues. Later on in, the, in one of the gospels, Luke in particular, Jesus is walking through Samaria and he comes to a lonely woman at a well. She's lonely because she's an outcast. It points out that this poor lady is a widow seven times. And she's out there alone because the city has cast her out. And she cannot go to the well with all the other women. So Jesus sits by down at the well and he visits with her. By the end of the story, the woman thinks, this Jesus has living water. This Jesus has good news, and he promised it to me, of all people, to me. And then the woman at the end of the story goes into the city, and she goes fishing. She says to everyone in a loud voice, come and see the man who gave me living water, Come and see the man 
who gave me living water and told me about my life in every single way, come and see him or come and fish with me and hear the story. Then today we have a story about Jonah. Jonah is sent to a terrible place called Nineveh. In the Bible, Nineveh is a part of a nation called Assyria and the Assyrians are vicious, barbaric warriors. They're a warrior state and they've captured many of the people of Israel and Jonah doesn't wanna go there. Can't blame him. He goes out in the sea, he falls into the water, he gets swallowed by a fish, the fish belches him up on the beach and in that slime covered costume he now wears, he grumbles and goes to Nineveh he walks into the city for an entire day. He gets to a place where God tells him to call these people to repentance, these most wicked people. He gets out his fishing pole, so to speak, and he gives the world's shortest sermon. I can just see him mumbling down into his collar. Uh, God said, repent. You've been a little bit on the naughty side but he'll forgive you if you repent. He figures he's wasted his time, his life, and his breath. So what does he do? He begins to walk out of the city and on the way out of the city, it's such a miraculous fishing expedition that people and cows and dogs and animals, everyone's repenting. He gets outside the city and he begins to mope. And God says, what's wrong? It was a successful expedition. And he says, I still can't believe you chose those rascals, those barbarians. I just can't believe that. And God says, you should rejoice that I have. Nice fishing, by the way. I'll be talking to you again. And then you have Jesus going to Galilee. Last week, he's in Jerusalem, and now all of a sudden, he's in Galilee. Mark is such a short book. It just takes a handful of verses for him to travel from Jerusalem, 60 miles north, to Galilee. And in this story, he's strolling along the beach, and the same guys show up. Andrew, John, Peter, they're all fishing. The same guys that were in Jerusalem. And Jesus simply says, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. We will teach about repentance or forgiveness. And we will tell people about the good news or redemption and forgiveness. These guys who've done that all their lives, drop everything, leave their parents behind, leave the workers behind, all their possessions behind, everything and follow Jesus to the end of their lives. Fantastic fishing stories all in a row in the season of Epiphany and they continue before us until we get to the season of Lent. It's interesting. They want people to come and join them fishing or in the fishing to talk about the good news or to talk about Jesus and forgiveness I was thinking about that and I was looking online, surfing through different churches and I wanted to see how churches presented themselves, excuse me. I came across a church down in Salem, Oregon where a friend of mine is a pastor. And the first thing on their webpage is a beautiful picture of their beautiful pipe organ. And then below it, it basically says, come and see our pipe organ. Now, I don't know about you, the pipe organ is gonna be a beautiful tool for fishing, but it doesn't say that that's why it's there. It doesn't talk about following Christ or the good news of the Messiah or the forgiveness of sin. It just says, come see our pipe organ. Puzzling. Surfed around mostly to the congregation that friends of mine are pastors at, came to another friend who's a pastor in Puyallup, and he's, his church on the cover has of their web page has a picture of all the people doing good works. 
picking up trash in different projects or building a playground, all the things that we all do and every church does. But nowhere does it say, come and join us as we confess our sins and receive the good news of Jesus Christ. Interesting, good stuff to do, but it doesn't say what Mark wants us to say. And as I went through cover page after cover page, so to speak, that was a recurring theme. Join us in our good works, one said, but it didn't say come and visit with us. I challenge all of you to call up Charlene or to call up the Nelsons or to call up Tom Strohshine and visit with them about the good news. They are very, very good at doing that. And I just spotted Kim Campbell. She's so good at talking about the good news. What a blessing to have these people in your midst that with open arms would welcome you into their homes to visit with you about the good news of salvation. That's what I wanted to say to you today. It's a beautiful calling for beautiful people like yourselves. Today, we end this time together thinking about the good news that you've been called into, baptized into, and challenged into. Top priority, the mission of, our con of your congregation is simply to share the good news of Jesus Christ with whoever you meet. And these texts challenge us to practice that when we go fishing. I suspect that there are many of you that have gone fishing in many different places as I have in my life in Alaska, fishing for halibut, in the San Juan Islands, fishing for cod and fishing for salmon, in the lakes around Washington and Idaho, fishing for the, the salmon that are returning up the rivers, quite possibly in the lakes for the trout and the bass and the many different flavors of fishing we can do. We're challenged to do that in our everyday lives with the gospel and the good news. Amen. We continue in our worship service with the hymn, We Are Called. You find it on the third page of your bulletin.
let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For what and for whom do the people pray? Feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to add another petition here. For a living. I would like to pray for all the children and all the teachers in the world. Let us pray. Have for mercy, oh God. Sorry, Carol, go ahead. Um, for Olivia Holiday, um, that she recovered from her appendectomy surgery and for the whole holiday family. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we begin to set our tables for the great thanksgiving, for the Eucharist, for Holy Communion. Uh, if you need a moment to get those things, Please do so. See a couple of folks that are getting their communion things out and getting them set up. Wait for, for Vern to come back. I see he's gone.
Okay, we'll continue. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One announcement this morning, next Sunday, will lead the Zoom service from Emmanuel Sanctuary. This uh, is because we are confirming three of our daughters of this congregation, the three Woods sisters, who during confirmation earlier, earlier in the fall were in state playoffs and couldn't uh, do both. And so, I suggested they do the state playoffs. And when we caught up with each other, we would have the three of them join the other five that were confirmed earlier in the fall. And their day is this coming next Sunday. So that'll be in the sanctuary, but that's a, that leaves an iffy question. I mean, some of you are probably thinking, well, I'd like to be there. I think we have to do that with caution and uh, we have to wear masks and clean hands and all those stringent details. I have not talked to Deb Dumrose or, or any of the other leaders about that. If the sanctuary uh, is to be restricted just to the Woods family, but uh, if we follow precedent from when the other children were confirmed in the fall, uh, it would suggest that it's limited to just them and their families and the staff that would choose to serve at the sanctuary. And because of the pandemic, that also means that our organist has the freedom to choose if she wants to lead the music from a 
like maybe her home or some other place rather than being exposed to uh, an extended family that will be there for these three three girls so if you need to ask that if you're not sure what to do i would i i haven't talked to her yet but i think you just need to call deb dumrose or the, and see how or maybe barb kirchmeyer and see how the executive committee wants to play that. that's for next sunday are there any other announcements today? Hey everyone, this is Cass. If you're planning to um, join us for discussion afterwards about the lots committee and, and status of where we are with that, um, we'll reconvene, oh, let's say about uh, 10, 20. That'll give you a chance to take care of a bio break and get another cup of coffee. And that'll also give uh, Rob Ely and I a chance to transfer power so that um, I can run the meeting. So about uh, yeah, 10, 20 ish, we'll uh, reconvene here in Zoom land. Thank you. Any other announcements today? Can I just tell you something my niece did this week? Sure. She, my niece lives in uh, right out in DC and um, she, her, she works for five guys, uh, the hamburger joint. And it was closed because they're so close to the Capitol. So she took the, the advantage of raising money over almost $3,000 and she fed the firemen and the policemen in her area meals morning and night and gave them extra treats to help them um, be happy because they were really, it's a tough time and they were um, not able to go home. They worked straight through for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I was just really proud of my niece. I think that was pretty cool what she did. Anyhow, I wanted to share that. We have that's, to have some good news. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Thank you, Deb. You're welcome. Kathy, it's good to see you. Um, uh, any other announcements today? Then we'll proceed with the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Followed by our closing hymn.